one of the features of modern finance is that everybody wants instant information in real time. We want those charts that go on green, 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 red, 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 green, 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 red, 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 red. It's exciting. It drives, well, CNBC, that's basically what they do. And there are other networks that uh, have all that information. Bloomberg News Service has started out really as a financial news service. I mean, it's, it's launched a tremendous industry. And it's what people really crave. The question is, what does it mean? And for that matter, are we looking at the right things? And is there information that's available in somewhat real time that might surprise you? The answer to that is, I recently was surprised. We'll get to that. One of the problems I have with financial reporting generally is, is that it's kind of done like sports, for lack of a better term. Um, as I always say, economics is sociology with a way of keeping score. We emphasize the score, pretty much like a sports game. Uh, you tell, say who won the game and you know, what the score was. The uh, 49ers were beaten by the, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. The thing is, when you have all this information coming in in real time, you need to know what it means. The most commonly cited figure is the Dow was up 200 points today. And people go, oh, Dow was up 200 points. Okay, what does this mean? First of all, what is the Dow or Dow Jones Industrial Average? How are those 30 stocks picked? How are they weighted? And how does that weighting get us to something called a point? I mean, what is a point? Well, it's complicated. In fact, the 30 stocks that are part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average were originally heavy industry, and they're kind of, well, there's a much more bigger retail component. They've changed it over the years. And yeah, it's uh, there isn't a single stock from 100 years ago that's still in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. They've all been kind of swapped out over time. And the you know what is a point? Well, it's just a weighted average of those, weighted by yeah, it's complicated. But without points, the market would be of course pointless. It's a way of handy reporting that everybody kind of gets, or at least they think they get. Right now. Through the virus, many of us are living pretty much day to day. It's like getting through alcoholism. And I keep hoping that we have hit rock bottom at some point and that we're going to recover. But we all know that the day by day kind of thing comes after a long period of what seems like good times. Looking back on them, not so good, but they were fun at the time. And that's where we are now. And that brings me to the surprising piece of data. See. One thing that I never watch in anything resembling world, real time is world trade. At the end of the year, the World Trade Organization reports these numbers, and it's just like, you know, I mean, the boats are crossing the Pacific. It takes three weeks. Everything is happening pretty slowly at like 20 knots is the speed of everything. It's not a big deal, and it doesn't change much. Well, they just released figures for the second quarter of 2020. We're in the second quarter. It turns out that, you know, because those boats are moving slowly, you can kind of guess as to how things are going just by how, how the boats are performing at this point, how loaded they are, etc. And you can get some solid real-time data. It never mattered before because everything happened so slowly, but it's happening much more quickly now. Now, a fall of 18.5% in uh, merchandise goods trade around the world uh, comes out to, it means basically that we've gone from 19.5 trillion down to 16 trillion in total world trade. Now that's in goods. Services are another 5.8 trillion, which is a pretty big number. I was hoping to break out services by all of the details, see if there's a substantial remote work component. You know, somebody living in Colombia who's writing software for a company in San Francisco. I know somebody who's doing that. Um, you know, how big is that as a trend? Is that important? Can't get those numbers out of it. But the trade in goods is actually growing slowly. Or sorry, the trade in services. The trade in goods has actually been decreasing. In 2019, growth was only 3%, basically the same as the world GDP. It stalled at about a quarter of, or just under a quarter of world GDP. And it wasn't going anywhere early in this year. Boom, it crashed back down. Now, 
There is a general belief that this will recover in 2021, but how much? No one knows. It turns out that we get this data in real time. It's just never been delivered in real time before because it wasn't that interesting, but it is now. Also, in April, uh, in case you're wondering, uh, airplane traffic fell 75%, but it's recovered 58% of that. I know, it's kind of weird to get all these numbers. Uh, it recovered about half of its drop, so it's only down about 33% overall right now. Interesting figure. We all know that those will recover somewhat. It's just a question of where they go to, and it's very hard to make a prediction. The fact that world trade in general has declined so rapidly is, first of all, hardly surprising. Second of all, it is potentially devastating. Demand for U.S. dollars, as I said earlier, depends heavily on world trade. World trade is done in U.S. dollars, or 85% of it, roughly. So the demand for the dollar around the world at this point reflects its function as a safe harbor, that it's going to be a good store of value for idle money that's being parked waiting for all of this to end, for something to happen. It will no longer be uh, parked if something happens or if people no longer see us as a safe harbor. The world trade part of it has a lower demand and it's going to have a significantly lower demand going forward. How much? Well, the World Trade Organization is estimating a 20% overall drop in, uh, uh, in world trade for this year. And it's or it's by by the end of this year, but it's going to recover substantially, and they're thinking only seven or eight percent, which is significant. We haven't seen that kind of drop since two thousand and eight, the last crisis, but it's important. The main thing is is that we have all these numbers at hand. It's important to keep track of them, and as we're going by day by day, maybe we can develop a picture of the long term. But when we have the numbers, we tend to focus very specifically on the very short term. They drive us towards looking more and more short term all the time, and we get too excited. It turns out the granddaddy of all long-term numbers can be done in real time. Who knew? We never, never needed it before. But we need to focus on where we're going long term. No one really knows at this point, but we get a few clues from numbers like that. World trade is down 18.5%. After having a fairly anemic 2019, it wasn't growing rapidly. Now that's merchandise trade is down 18.5%. Trade in services seems to be just going right along. That's interesting in and of itself. It's only 5.8 trillion, only a few trillion here and there, but it's important. And if I can break out those numbers to see how much of it is not the big companies, I'll let you know. But keep an eye on those numbers or don't. It's pretty hard to know exactly where to keep your focus. We'll see everybody.